Welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show on 94.7 The Pulse. Music, interviews, news and, well, Two Blokes Chatting. Now, here are the two blokes. Robert Cameron, can you please tell me the collective noun for Roberts? Uh, look, this is, a, um, this is a pleasure to interview this gentleman who spends a lot of time on this radio station doing good things for others and we thought we might have uh, a little touch on his story which uh, is very much in line with the Anzac theme today. Robert Eagles, good morning to you. Good morning, Robert. Uh, Good morning, Neil. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Great to have you aboard. Uh, It would be uh, sort of a tough time for you because you're one of the people who has made the Pulse radio station very much your second home. You hear quite a lot doing a lot of stuff for others and I know it gives you a great deal of personal joy as well, but it's still about the giving side, and with this coronavirus issue, you're sort of almost banned from the place, apart from your little stint with Dennis Scanlon on Friday mornings from 9 to 11. How are you handling the uh, the change of routine? Well, uh, I'm bearing up to it. I've got a few jobs that I'm doing around the place, so I've got a new computer, and uh, I'm slowly getting that into... Uh, a bit of learning time for you. Yes, a few... Uh, Little things like that. Now, Robert, let's uh, cut to the importance of the day. Um, we, Neil and I were talking about the difference the day has for some people. Neil's family not ne- necessarily involved in the armed forces. So Anzac Day, while it's, um, it's something on the, the calendar, it doesn't have a, an emotional effect. I was talking about how mine was a bit flippant until I'd met an active serviceman. And then you and I, have, of course, had little chats about your stint in Vietnam where you really lived it. Um, What's the day actually mean to you, or is it because you've been so involved in it, is, is it just one of 365 that's the same every day? To me, uh, Rob, uh, it's um, more or less one of the 365 days of the year. But I must say this, um, that a lot of people, many, many ex-servicemen, enjoy the commemoration of Anzac Day, and I respect that thoroughly. Yeah. I enjoy um, having the commemoration there, but I personally don't take part. Okay, because that's an interesting question. Good morning, Robert. Hello, uh, Neil. How are you? Very well indeed. Thank you. Because I I suspect for many, and again, there's no right and there's no wrong. As I was saying to Rob off air, um, it's clearly uh, an important day, but for me, I don't have that personal involvement, whereas Mm -hmm. other people do. But I suspect there are some ex-servicemen and current servicemen, I suspect, who use the opportunity to reconnect with people that they've gone through an extraordinary experience with. Of course. Of course that goes on. Uh, there's, uh, if I was to go along to one of the marches on an Anzac day, I'd come across people which I had not seen for quite a while. I, there's no doubt I'll enjoy the company and, and the, the, the whole thing, but it's something I don't uh, go out of my way mm. to uh, get involved in. Robert, is that, is that partly due to the fact that the 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 event of being there was, has, has left a, an emotional scar on you? Well, yes, uh, when I came back, I uh, was um, in a rut, in a groove, like a needle in a record, just continuously playing the same uh, groove all the time, and just wasn't moving on. Now, I'm moving on, um, after much encouragement from uh, outside, and um, I daren't look back or don't want to look back Mm. because I'm afraid of going back and back into that groove again, which is something I do not want to happen. Yeah, and and, and while I'm reluctant to take you back into that groove, uh, let's just say in a a washover, there must have been some some things that happened in that environment that even though you were were perhaps told to to what to expect, um, Mm. to live it, it must have been uh, quite emotionally draining for you. There was, yes, there's... um, I was... uh, I spent all my time um, on um, radio equipment and uh, was involved with um, lots of messages going backwards and forwards. So uh, I knew what was going on, but also um, every time uh, there was someone injured, 
if we were out on patrol or something of that nature, I would know about it. Mm. And um, I'd uh, also be subject to the uh, the emotions that would be stirred up um, by the officer in charge who was uh, um, arranging the dust off and all that sort of thing. Because I think... And, sorry, go on. You keep going. Sorry. And... Um, Although they, they were not supposed to be affected by emotion, of course they were. And that would affect me as well. So looking at where we are now, all these years later, 50, 50 to 60 years, or 50 odd years later, mm. um, I, the, when I was growing up at school, because um, I'm a little younger than you, I, I was... Uh, I was born, <laughs> oh, But I don't look at Robert, that's the difference. <laughs> uh, so I was 10 when the whole thing finished, and so therefore... I was too young to really get my head around what was going on. I think people sort of my age down for the sort of like next 15 years below me, mm. I would have thought it was all a bit, yeah, mm, you know, whatever. Yep. But in the last 25 years, there has been a real awakening in my mind of not only the Vietnam activity, but even looking back into the, the bigger wars that happened in, in the, you know, the teens and the 40s. Um, does that make you feel good that people are now starting to recognise the extraordinary service and sacrifice made by people? It makes me feel good because I know it would make uh, my uh, comrades feel good as well uh, by having this added recognition. Yeah, based on that, uh, Robert, the change has been good because I, I didn't experience it, see it myself, but I have read a lot of articles about how y you gentlemen, when you return from active service, that life in Australia wasn't necessarily that pleasant for you, whereas perhaps when... The World War Two and World War One veterans came home. They came home to to somewhat of a hero welcome. That's you right. you yeah. certainly didn't experience that. Mm. But uh, we weren't. Did did you did you suffer any of that directly, or did your condition of being in the groove sort of keep you away from society for a period? Uh, I did suffer some of it. Yes, I uh, perhaps don't want to go into uh, detail on that, mm. but yes, I did, and. Um, uh, family friction. Yes, you shouldn't be there, or yes, you should be there. Yep. That sort of thing. It was almost as if it, if it was your fault that the war happened. And, That's exactly yeah. right, yeah. yeah. Do, do you hold resentment to um, perhaps not leaders of the army, but maybe uh, politicians that uh, that made the decision to, to send Australia into that seemingly stupid, wasteful battle? Well, it was seemingly... Uh, Stupid! I, I knew that when I first got there. Um, I, I must say that uh, the um, we were setting up on Nui Dat, setting up the main radio station there, and I was only up there seven days or something like that, maybe a fortnight, and um, saw the Americans. Uh, they were bombing the blazes out of the place, and uh, I was just uh, thinking to myself then, what a waste of time, effort and life this is and that was my attitude towards it um, the Vietnam, Vietnamese people, they're good people the country's a lovely country but uh, it was just uh, it, uh, that part was a terrible waste, but having said that Australia did do a lot of good there like uh, building hospitals and that sort of thing yeah, so the... Uh, and that the, was a big plus. Yeah, a big plus that happened, and, and, and reading that as well, that that was yeah. a positive contribution if, in what was a very negative environment. Yeah, yeah. If that a positive contribution could have been done without the uh, war, that would be great. Yeah. And, and it, I mean, some evidence of the positive contribution is the, the level of Vietnamese involvement, particularly in Melbourne, now that people have chosen to come here. Oh, yes. yes. And, and, mm. and that's a marvellous reflection of, obviously, the good stuff that you guys did over there. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, of course, they're uh, a great addition to our uh, society here. Uh, Robert, going back to the start of it, were you a, a, a volunteer or were you a, a draftee into the armed forces? No, I was a volunteer. I uh, joined the army in uh, 1961 and late 61. And um, the uh, Vietnam War, I don't think it was going then, it was... Uh, Troops got involved, oh, I think, about 60... Uh, I don't know, 66 or 7, I think, yeah, Australia finally went into like it. that. And um, oh, we got involved in 66. 
I know before we had advisors there, but the uh, task force was there in '66. The Americans were involved, involved earlier. When I uh, joined the army, no, this was uh, no, nothing like this was going on. But um, I didn't object to going there. I, I just had an open mind when I was told that uh, I was to be part of the task force. So, what what uh, attracted you to the armed forces as a young fellow? Uh, I lo- love radio. You should do some. Why do you... <laughs> yeah, I should do some, shouldn't I? Yeah, well, see, we'll put in a good word with Leo, if that helps. Ah, uh-huh, right. I'd love that. <laughs> no, I love um, radio communications, radio equipment and that sort of thing. And that was the main reason for it. Well, Robert, uh, we, um, we certainly appreciate what you've done and knowing you as well as I do and, and certainly class you, you as a friend, I, I sense that the last uh, 20 or so years... Um, um, have been better for you than those first when you first got back from from Vietnam, and as you said, you don't. There's a lot of it you don't want to touch on, but it's good that you've come out the other side and are now making a really positive contribution to society, but more particularly to yourself. Uh, and hopefully, those dark days are well behind you. Uh, I think they are. I've got to say this: that um, when I uh, came back, I went to a job, and that was a job at uh, the Shell Refinery. And I stayed there for about 30-odd years. Now, all that period was uh, reasonably dark. There was light spots through it, but um, it was much of this in-groove stuff. And it's only of recent times, like doing stuff at the Pulse and that sort of thing, that things have really come open for me. That's how long it's taken. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's good that you're on the right side of it now and... uh and we thank you for the contribution that you've uh, you make aid to this station, but to Geelong community, it's a it's a good thing, and it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, it, it's good to hear your story. It's good to hear that that other side of um, of Anzac Day, and I'm glad you appreciate that the, the Australian public in general are taking to the day as as they should. For sure, yes, yeah. Well, we got uh, a little song that uh, well, yeah, means a bit to you. Yeah, because Robert is he, he wants he's a he's a, an aspiring radio performer. We, we might get him to introduce the song. We've yes. got a song here by Garth Porter that you selected, I Once Was a Shoulder. A shoulder. I Was Once a Soldier. I can't even read. Do you want to have a crack at introducing that, Robert, and we'll play that song for you? Not a problem. Thanks very much, fellas, for uh, having me on. Much appreciate that. Thanks for joining thank us. Thank you to Jalal Mayer for listening to me. And uh, a great track, one that commemorates Vietnam, Garth Porter, and a song from uh, his uh, Summer Love album, I think it is. No, After the War album. It is indeed. But this time, After the War, from 2018, Garth Porter, I Once Was a Soldier. Thanks, mate. My story. <laughs> 